In the 18th century, a humble English clergyman and scientist by the name of Stephen Hales began unraveling some of nature's most profound mysteries. Little did the world know that his simple yet groundbreaking experiments would lay the foundation for modern plant physiology. Known for his innovative experiments, Hales is most famous for his work on transpiration, the process by which plants lose water through their leaves. But what made his discoveries truly remarkable was the insight into how plants absorb and transport water, a puzzle that had been baffled scientists for centuries. In one of his famous experiments, Hales inserted a stem of a plant into a tube filled with water, sealed the tube to prevent air from entering, and measured the water level over time. As the plant's leaves lost water through transpiration, which is the evaporation of water from the plant's surface, the water level in the tube dropped. This simple yet powerful experiment allowed Hales to quantify the rate at which water was being taken up by the plant. His observations confirm a crucial truth. Plants draw water from their roots, transport it through the stem, and release it through their leaves. Through this process, Hale discovered that plants don't just absorb water for survival. They rely on it to transport essential nutrients throughout their system. He was the first to show that water loss through transpiration creates a pool, helping to draw water and nutrients from the soil all the way up through the plant. In addition to his work on transpiration, Hales observed another fascinating phenomenon, the root pressure. He noticed that water uptake could create pressure within the roots, aiding in the upward movement of water. This pressure, particularly important in smaller plants, helped push the water upward, combating the forces of gravity. But Hales didn't stop at observation. He was one of the first to approach plant physiology with a quantitative mindset. By calculating the exact amount of water a plant took in, he linked the plant's water uptake to environmental factors such as temperature and humidity, paving the way for future research in the field. Hale's experiments, published in his book, Vegetable Statics in 1727, involved measuring the rate of water uptake and transpiration in plants. His findings included, first, quantifying plant water uptake and transpiration, second, demonstrating the role of roots in water absorption, and third, showing the effect of environmental factors such as temperature, humidity, and light on plant water relations. Hale's work laid the foundation for future research in plant physiology, ecology, and agriculture. His quantitative approach paved the way for scientists like Julius von Sack and others to further explore plant physiology. Today, we'll explore the groundbreaking contributions of Jan Baptista van Helmont, a Flemish chemist, physiologist, and physician whose work in plant science and chemistry paved the way for future discoveries. Van Helmont is often remembered for his revolutionary ideas on plant growth and his early work with gases. But let's start with one of his most famous experiments, the willow tree experiment. In the early 17th century, Van Helmont was curious about the sources of plant growth. Common belief at the time was that plants grew by eating the soil. To test this, he decided a careful experiment that would challenge this idea and changed the course of plant science forever. Van Helmont took a young willow tree weighing just 5 pounds and planted it in a large pad 
containing 200 pounds of soy. The twist? He watered the tree exclusively with distilled water, making sure no other substances were added to the soil during the experiment. He then uh, patiently waited for five years, monitoring the tree's growth while carefully controlling its environment. At the end of this period, the tree had grown significantly gaining a weight of 164 pounds, the soil on the other hand had only lost a few ounces of weight. From these results, Van Helmont concluded that the increase in the tree's mass did not come from the soil. Instead, he hypothesized that water was the primary substance responsible for plant growth. This was a revolutionary idea for this time, and suggested that plants were not eating the soil as previously thought. While Van Helmont's conclusion was groundbreaking, it was also incomplete. He did not account for the role of carbon dioxide from the air, which was later identified as a key component of photosynthesis. Today, we know that both water and carbon dioxide, in addition to sunlight, are essential for plant growth and the formation of plant biomass. Van Helmont's impact didn't stop with plants. He was one of the first scientists to use the term gas, referring to the substances he observed during his experiments with burning charcoal and fermenting substances. He identified a gas which he called gas sylvester that was released in these processes. This was an early step in the study of gases, laying the foundation for future research in chemistry. John Baptiste van Helmont may not have fully understood the science of photosynthesis, but his work laid an important foundation for future research. His contributions to chemistry and plant science helped bridge the gap between old, mystical theories and modern scientific understanding. Van Helmont's curiosity and experimental spirit continue to inspire researchers today. <laughs>